Hello, everyone. This is Matt Hoos with Rada Green, and we are going to discuss filtration. I know lots of us are worried about all the particulars that are in the air right now. Can we get all the dust out of the air, which which is good to breathe, which is a, which is bad to breathe? Um, we're also really worried about some of the micro particulates that are out there, and I've got a special guest with us today that's going to help us understand better what is available on the market and which types of products you should put in your home or office. So, Joseph. Uh, He's from Maple Air. Can you tell us a little bit about your filtration solutions and what people should be looking at for their homes, um, offices to basically breathe easier and get rid of some of the allergies and uh, microbes from the air? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, uh, you know, the exciting thing about filtration, um, certainly in, in, the, in the last year, is, is that we've gained an understanding of how important it is uh, with, with viruses for, for obvious reasons. But, you know, it, it's been an important part of healthy air for uh, certain groups of people for a very long time. And, it, you know, in addition to viruses, many of the particles that make us particularly uncomfortable are different pollens, uh, dust mite particles. Those are things that lead to asthma and allergies. So people that were already sensitive to those things um, you know, have been a little bit more in tune with these solutions. Um, you know, as you're probably aware, the portable air purifier market is huge. Um, you know, we all remember those ads from 10, 15 years ago where they've, you know, they got a purifier in a tube with some smoke in it and it, it sucks it all out and uh, kind of gimmicky, but, you know, I mean, they, they are doing something and portable air purifiers most certainly have a, have a place if you, if you don't have a forced air system or, you know, maybe if you're in an office at, at work and you think that, you know, the indoor air quality at your office isn't great, throw a portable in there. Um, you know, those air changes that you're getting in that room through that filter are definitely uh, important. However, when you're, when you're in your home, uh, there's some definite advantages to whole house filtration. And if you have a forced air system, you know, we're just gonna utilize the equipment that's already in your house anyway, and we're just gonna put it through a better filter. And to explain, you know, at, at a high level, what purity is, is again, it's, the, it's, it's particulate in the air. So we're not really talking about gases here so much, and we're not talking about humidity. Those are other aspects of it. We're talking specifically about the microfine particles that can end up in your lungs. And, you know, we like to say, uh, if it doesn't go through a filter, it's going through your lungs and your lungs are filtering it. And I, I think that paints a great picture as to why filtration is so important. Let your, yeah. let your HVAC system catch these things, not, not your lungs. Um, where, it, where it gets a little bit more complicated, maybe for the consumer is, you know, what exactly type of filter do they need? Um, if you're going down in your basement and you're pulling out what's already there and you've got a one inch filter, one of those blue kind of, you know, mesh ones that you could hold it up and, and see through it. Yeah. That's really there to protect, uh, your HVAC system. Um, it, you know, it's so that things that end up in the register or the vent don't go in there and clog your blower motor. You don't get, you know, uh, dirt in there essentially. But as far as human health is concerned, that's not, that's just really not what they're designed for. And, you know, we'll, I, we can touch on what we standardize on, but there are, you can start your high efficiency filtration at, you should really get to at least MERV 11. Um, that's where you're going to start getting mold spores and some of the particles that are released in the air, um, you know, from using hairspray and, and just having pets in the house, some types of bacteria. When we talk about some of these organisms, we need to keep in mind that, you know, it's hard to say, you know, this MERV gets viruses, this MERV gets bacteria, because, you know, just like um, people, there's a range of sizes within those individual particulates. So, I mean, some viruses might be very small and, and some might be yeah. much larger. Uh, but to get to get the most important, that's where we really start to get to MERV 13. And there's another number that comes in there, which is PM 2.5. And that's these micro particles, particularly ones related to cook smoke that are just extremely damaging to human health. And that's recognized um, by the EPA as well as the World Health Organization. And, you know, there are things we would typically think of as affecting you um, if you lived in a country that, that is, you know, has very high pollution or, or not a lot of, um, you know, regulation on, on how clean the air is. But in actuality, the air inside our home, even in a, in a clean community, can be quite poor, um, especially in a tight home where you know every time you cook, these types of particulates are 
they're they're going into the air and they're hanging in your house because they're not they're not being exchanged with fresh air. Ventilation plays a role in that. But remember, you know, those things are they're in there all the time. And if you've got filtration in there and you're you're circulating that system when you're cooking or if you've decided to make a fire in the fireplace or something like that, you can start to get these part particulate out of the air instantly before they enter your lungs. And um, you know, of course, th that's also going to be true of the pollens and other um, particles that are in there. Okay. So, you know, if, if all that Merv talk is a little bit confusing, uh, I, I think one way to simplify it is we can say, you know, if you get to Merv 13, you're going to grab the majority of those uh, particles that really negatively impact health. Even ones that are a little bit smaller that might get through a Merv 13, they typically hit you right on larger particles that, that would be caught in there. So you're doing a lot in your air with a Merv 13 filter. It, you know, when you get lower than that, you're certainly still doing more than a, than a one inch filter. Um, even with Merv 11, you're going to see probably less dust in the home, uh, less of some of the other particles, maybe the stuff you see floating in the air when, you know, when the, when the light's coming in. So, you know, th there's a range here and it might depend on your, on the individual health of the people in your family, how, how high you want to go. But we do believe that MERV 13 is a great standard for the home building industry and a great standard for the HVAC industry. And that's where we're getting those particulates that have been recognized to be, um, you know, some of the most volatile that are out there. And so again, that's going to hold true on the, on the portable side of the market too. Um, you know, you're going to want to make sure you've got filtration that's and you'll see a lot of terms out there, HEPA equivalent, you know, MERV 16. You, you'll want to you'll look for words like, you know, uh, captures PM 2.5, some of those types of things. I, there, I mean, there's some gimmicky terms out there when you get into the portable market. You want to make sure that you're still trapping these particles that are, you know, somewhere between, um, you know, one and, and 0.3 microns. So you should Got be, it. you should be able to find that when you're looking at the specifications of these, of these products. And you'll, you'll want to look into whether or not they release ozone into the air. That's not necessarily uh, a yeah. positive thing. It's another negative uh, impact on IAQ. Um, you know, we also recommend if, if you're putting this on to um, an existing system uh, in the home and you, you currently have a smaller filter, you know, get an HVAC professional in there. If you're doing this in an existing home, they can help make sure that the filter is not only uh, the best for your human health, but that it's also not going to have any negative impact uh, on your system. You know, just as we believe that indoor air quality is a system, you know, so is, is purification uh, as itself. It, it's attached to your entire HVAC system, and you want to make sure that the you know the proper CFM is going through the system, uh, that you're not creating too much pressure drop, that you're not having a negative impact on your um, energy efficiency. And, and that's one of the reasons if you see our filters, why, why, why they're thicker, you've got, you know, an increased amount of surface area there. So that even though you're putting a, a more, a larger, yeah. a more efficient filter, and you're actually lowering pressure drop, and you're having a better impact on your system, and you're ultimately keeping it cleaner. So, you know, in, in, in a nutshell, the, you know, the biggest advantage of air, air purity there is, is that you're doing something for your health while not sacrificing energy efficiency, not sacrificing the performance of your equipment. So kind of uh, all ships rise when you choose MERV 13 uh, filtration. And, and I, th I think that that's the irony of all this. So you mentioned you've got that cheap blue filter, which is pretty much good for catching birds and rats from going through your system <laughs> and getting into the blade. Um, that's probably most your most energy efficient filter um, because it allows so much airflow. And then when, re when you restrict the airflow, if you just, for that same one inch, uh, put, you know, a HEPA filter in that that you get from a big box store while you're definitely helping with the filtration, what you're doing, um, you know, with that static drop is putting that extra strain on the fan. And because you've got an extra strain on the fan, your energy bills are going to go up. Yeah. And, um, I, I think most people don't realize that's like, Hey, I'm doing a good thing here. It's like, well, maybe not. You put that extra strain in the fan. You may burn the fan out. You may void the warranty. Yeah. Yeah, the, the other thing, uh, speaking of that increased surface area is, you know, you, you got to be aware of, of blow by and bypass there as well. And when you think mm -hmm. about some of those one inch filters, you've got a piece of cardboard that you slit into, you know, some type of a, a, a cassette that, you know, was maybe just, uh, uh, you know, cut out of sheet metal and, and made on the spot, air is going to choose the path of least resistance. So if it can go yep. up and over that filter and around it, that's exactly what it's going to do. And then you're getting zero filtration from it. Um, so, you know, our filters have, have a rail on them. And I, I think any good filter is going to have something that allows it to secure in that cabinet that it's installed in so that not, you've got that increased um, 
surface area for the air to go through, but it's also the only place that it can go. It's the only way it can get through and get back into your system. And that, that's extremely important because anything that's getting around that filter, hey, look, now all the science you have that says your filter grabs this, well, it only grabs what goes through the filter. <laughs> so those numbers don't mean anything if, if that air is actually going you know, up around into the side of the filter. Yeah, for sure. I love inspecting a system and you see that the cap is off, which is like a cheap piece of sheet metal that's pressure fitted. Or when you go to inspect it, you know, they haven't changed it in a long time. Uh, the filter's clapped. So it's like, it's, it's full. It, it can't with, withstand any more resistance. So it's failed and, and then you, it's created its own bypass just because the air has to get around it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's not a good situation. And obviously your, your system doesn't allow for that. Yeah. Well, and Matt, you know, we'll, we'll throw up some pictures here uh, real quick, but our, our friends in the HVAC trade have sent us many photos over the years of, you know, what they've seen when they've <laughs> opened up um, somebody's filtration. And uh, it would really be ghastly if you thought about what they were probably breathing, if that's what was going through there. And that was what they had protecting. Oh, for sure. Very, very interesting. Well, thanks, Joseph, for sharing this information. And I uh, definitely appreciate the time that you gave to us today. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up. We'd also like to hear your feedback in the comment section below uh, about what kind of filter that you have, what kind of filter you want, and some of the issues that you're having with your indoor air quality. And, um, you know, Joseph and I can respond to those comments and definitely give you some feedback and some solutions to help you breathe easier um, and live a healthier life.